Can we now open the floor for Q&A? Uh, please identify yourself first, name of the company uh, and name of uh, your name, and uh, also identify the speaker to whom you want to uh, ask the question, and please uh, keep the question very brief. Thank you. My name is Mohammed Junaid. I work at Lucky Cement Limited. My question is, is there any preventive way of, uh, I mean, avoiding that somebody might post uh, uh, defaming content on social media website like Twitter, Facebook? I mean, I think there is no way. Every, anybody can post anything on our Facebook or Twitter page. Yeah. So, so there is only one way that we can clarify that subsequently. So way uh, you can actually stop anybody from posting anything on Twitter, Facebook, or any other mediums. What what we have, what, what we can, you can do, as uh, there are listening mediums. Uh, this there are technologies available which allow you to listen to different websites and uh, Twitters, Facebook. So if anybody puts anything up on any social media website, you get to know about it. So th uh, this is a very pertinent, very good question. You know that how would you respond to something if you don't know anything has happened? If somebody puts a tweet about you and it gets around 1,000 likes or a million likes and you don't get any time to respond to it. So the good thing is that if you have such technology available which you can use to see that if there's anything trending about you. And plus I'm sure uh, the other thing which is uh, like I said that uh, in my presentation that you need to present on all the social mediums. You know ignorance, ignorance cannot be, uh, uh, you can't be ignorant about this reality. So you have to be on social media to respond to anything and plus you can use technology to identify if somebody puts anything against you. So that is the only way you can do it. Otherwise, you can't, you have a diminution uh, according to the Economic Will Act, you maybe take some legal action against them, but still at this stage, you can't stop anybody from that. So I think that will answer your question. Thank you. I think people are more interested in having lunch. <laughs> I think lunch is near, so I think we can. <laughs> yeah, I have a question. Uh, this is Irfan from Sri Southern Gas Company, and I have a question with uh, Mr. Regarding the definition of internal auditing, he said that uh, uh, being an auditor, we also provide the consultancy to the management. Uh, my question is that that we, being an auditor, cannot be part of decision-making process. If we provide a consultancy, we drive the management to a point, but take a decision based on our consultancy. So in this way, we are, in other way, we are becoming a part of this in making. So how would you define this consultancy and uh, audit definitions? See, uh, this is a very pertinent question. Uh, much has been talked about it, but you have to actually strike a balance. You do not have to become a consultant by going into the premises of the audity and telling him each and every single thing that this is the procedure, for example, operational risk management framework. Now you do not have to go to the risk management department and tell them that this, right from the scratch, you, you are not supposed to tell them this is the process till the end. But you will go as an auditor, you will observe, you will see the things and you will highlight the deficiencies in the program and then you will give the suggestions and in that way you will become, uh, you will pl play the role of an advisor. That's, that's a tricky thing, you have to strike a balance. These two yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. That we uh, drive the management to a point where they take the decision based on our consultancy, right? Mm. We provide them suggestion, and they take this suggestion into their uh, decision-making process. And once uh, they take the decision, if it fell, they also blame the internal auditor for such uh, consultancy or decision-making. I think process. that will turn into more of a debate thing. So we'll, we can do it one to one during the lunch. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. While the mic makes its way to you, Junaid Saab, just feel free to call on anyone. I just have a question from the audience. How many of you, how many of your organizations actually have a social media policy in place? That's what, maybe 10% of the audience? Interesting. Anyway, please continue. Okay, let me, if, okay. there's a question over there. Yeah. You want to ask? Uh, uh, my name is Sharo. I have a question for you. Okay, Ferguson is going towards working towards the data analytics and everything. What about ICAP? Do they have any legal regulations anymore or the, any standards or any checklist or anything? Is it a part of their corporate compliance and anything? Quality control? Uh, any update on that? ICAP? Uh, I don't know what ICAP Hello. is. It? Uh, like we are discussing about the internal audit here, right? So the, for the internal audit, ICAP is not the regulator for the firms or the, for the profession. Uh, but 
that's a world which we have to head. That data analytics is the future. You will be moving towards the like vouchers to that, but that depends on the organization maturity as well. So, but there is no regulatory framework you can say that they can expect accept that as a data analyst. But uh, people are using it for the external audit as well. Yeah. Just a quick yeah. to, uh, add to it now. Since we are internal audit, in an hmm. internal audit yeah. conference and internal auditors have to deal with that and it's a part of audit. So I kept or any regulatory authority should be looking into data analytics, data analysis and of course the firms are doing it, a profession yeah. is doing it, anybody doing it? Uh, is, I, do I have the permission to basically yeah, yeah, yeah. say something on it? Permission. Uh, basically data and analytics is a new tool and uh, it is being used by all the big firms internationally and they are embarking on using it more and more on audit and in internal audit. Now there is no uh, as such regulatory requirement as, as, as far as I know r right now. It's only the IAASB which has come up with a sort of a exposure draft where they have asked for input from the various uh, professional firms about the use of data and analytics and then they are actually going to work on developing certain auditing standards relating to data and analytics. Global professional firms are already involved in using various uh, data analytics tools but they are in the process of uh, uh, development. Uh, they are in the initial stages of implementing data and analytics t tools in their audit processes and in their internal audit uh, processes. So it's very early days yet, particularly in Pakistan, we are using some basic e-data or e-journal entry or those kind of techniques uh, uh, in that respect. Uh, various routines, uh, there are a number of routines and like um, the the uh, computer assisted audit techniques like IDEA software and those kind of things. We're using those basic uh, data analytics things, but there are uh, advanced uh, data and analytics tools being developed. But they are being used in Western countries, limited uh, countries as pilot projects at the moment. So, so it's early days yet. Thank you, Amir Sahib. Uh, I have a question with Mr. Ataullah. Um, it is increasing, increasingly become important to align uh, technology with the business since the <coughs> landscape of technology is changing um, and uh, obviously it requires a, a, a kind of medium term to long term vision because the technology is changing uh, with every, every, every single year technology is changing and new types of technology is coming in. Um, typically how do the organizations see it? They, 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 they typically see it as an investment or they come from the same mindset of seeing it as an expense? Uh, if you talked about, if you would have asked this question 12 to 15 years back, my answer would have been very straight that it's an expense. But I think this is not the case anymore. Uh, the organization do see it as an investment because if you talk about the banking industry, you still cannot have a core banking solution with the DOS system uh, and where you have a server placed in a branch where you have to run an end of day, where you have to run start of day. You really cannot afford to have such kind of systems. You need to have uh, complex systems. You, you have to be compliant with the Basel II. You have to comply with the AML issues. You have to uh, be compliant with the so many other systems that we now have in the market. So that's now become investment for the banks and you cannot really survive with those old systems. Thank you very much, uh, Junit uh, Saab. I will. One, one last question with uh, All right. uh, about social media. Um, social media is increasingly, increasingly become the new norm of communication, and obviously, with the opportunities it brings, it also uh, brings certain challenges. And you know, one of the challenges, like um, um, you also mentioned in the presentation, one of the or maybe some of the disgruntled employee may actually post uh, fake news or negative news, or maybe some information that may a competitor may take advantage of it. So how do companies actually, before embarking on the journey of social media, how do they actually address the issue of that, what are the norms and policies and uh, for the employees to actually follow, what they can post, what they cannot post? You know, uh, if you have issues for presentation, um, I had some discussion um, on the training and awareness sessions, uh, which the company needs to do with its employees. 
making them, them aware about the overall social media policy and uh, telling them and guiding them on what they can post or what they should not post on social media. But it is all about training and uh, monitoring on the other hand. But uh, the issue which uh, does exist, Jinnit uh, Bishwara rightly said, is that, and somebody also rightly mentioned, that you, you can't actually stop any, anybody from doing something. If somebody puts some defamatory remarks or gets some uh, personal or confidential information regarding the company on social media, you can reprimand them and or take action against them. Uh, the alternate option is just to give them, providing them training and telling them not to do it, but you can't stop them from doing it. So that is the only thing you can do. Thank you. With this, I think uh, we sum up in just two minutes. Um, technology landscape uh, continues to challenge the business the way we do. Um, initially, in the yester years, technology was used to manage data. Currently, technology is being used to generate data, and the future is all about uh, uh, big data, artificial intelligence, and uh, other some techniques that uh, Shahzad also mentioned. Um, so again, um, IT, information technology, communication, it brings enormous opportunities for the businesses. And it's uh, going to change our lives forever. But again, with every opportunity, like we say, with every risk, there's, uh, there's a reward. With every reward, there's a risk. So with all these uh, opportunities, there are also challenges. Um, it kind of uh, opens up new types of risk which actually requires uh, different types of techniques and attributes and educations and qualification and trainings to deal with it. Um, uh, and coming back to uh, linking with it uh, cyber security and uh, internal audit, obviously it also requires a different set of knowledge and landscape to deal with these type of situation that would actually emerge in the future. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you very much. Ah, the need for lunch, but before that, we need to uh, have your round of applause uh, because I'd like to invite Mr. Ali Dada, who's the head of business transformation at Etihad Airways, to join me up on stage with Mr. Hamza Hashmi. May I please have uh, Mr. Ataullah Maiman, who's a joint director at the State Bank of Pakistan, to accept a token of our gratitude, and all of you, a big round of applause. May I request Mr. Tahir Sharif, who's a partner at AF Ferguson & Co, to come up and accept a token of our gratitude. Next, may I request Mr. Mohammad Shahzad, Senior Manager at AF Ferguson & Company, to come up and join the distinguished gentleman. Come on, this volume is going down, which is not a good sign. And of course, Mr. Junaid J. Shekha, who is the CEO of IT Minds Limited, for conducting an excellent discussion. May I please request all the gentlemen to also um, come up for a group photograph? And while they prepare for a group photograph, I'm going to rattle off some, some key points for all of you. Lots of networking which can take place, but I will have to request you to be back by 20 past 2 so that we can get on with things. Um, there's a great deal of food outside which is awaiting you, but right after you give these gentlemen a very, very big round of applause.